let's just calm down and okay here we go now go ahead Welcome, welcome very, very much to Conversation. A pleasure to welcome to the program an old friend of mine and a friend of the universe, I'm here to say, and that's uh, uh, Stuart Mason Dambrot. He's a major intellectual. We've done a number of programs in the past, and he's always on the cutting edge of understanding things from E.O. Wilson and others in a comprehensive and very interesting, creative way. And see, and uh, as uh, Stuart, so good to welcome you once again to Conversation. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you're it's looking good, good, good man. To be here. It's yeah, good. good. To be here. So you got a new thing going, and um, I want you to talk about that. Maybe just quickly, uh, uh, you know, two or three minutes background, and then let's wade into this new thing that you and I are both interested in in a way that doesn't seem to have a wide following about this concept of uh, scarcity having some sort of meaning to the human condition. But share a little sure. bit of your own background, <coughs> just for a couple minutes. Um, uh, before we get into that, I'm going to mm. start off by asking the audience a okay. few questions. Now, I know it's kind of a non sequitur. Uh, this is not interactive. By all means. Uh, but uh, it, the, the, the goal is to just um, think about the answers, and that's kind of the preparation for what I'll explain afterwards. The first question seems like it has an obvious answer. It is, how many of the audience uh, members think about money, have thought about money? I think it's Ten thousand percent. I think it's reasonable to assume it's everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. The question becomes then: How many have thought? Why is it necessary that we always think about money? Have you asked yourself that question? But finally, and this is the question that speaks to what we're going to be discussing for the next hour, and that is: How many have given serious thought? to the proposition that it might be possible that money is not absolutely necessary for life? That's the question at uh -huh. hand. Uh -huh. um, the project that we're here to discuss is Transinopia. Mm. Uh, it's formed out of two Latin roots, trans, meaning beyond, and inopia, meaning scarcity, beyond scarcity. Uh, the question is whether uh, a post-scarcity, which often but not necessarily, but should imply post-capital uh, environment is, is feasible. Uh, the issues are many, but to simplify it, uh, what I'm doing is taking the the body of thought, mine and others, uh, on post-scarcity, there are many groups, not many, but there are several groups. There's a lot of literature, a lot of talking, a lot of book writing. Uh, the three primary groups are the technocracy movement, uh, the Venus Project, and uh, the Zeitgeist movement. Mm. Uh, but when I started thinking about initially just the technology that would be involved in post-scarcity and then the sociocultural aspects, I discovered that no one, no group, no individual was not only was not interested in testing their ideas. Uh, is it possible? Is it can human beings adjust to an environment uh, where capital no longer exists? Uh, and therefore, the current thinking is locked into a future hypothetical state, uh, and it's a very safe place to be. If you don't have to test it, mm. uh, then you don't have to worry about it. You can continue writing and talking, and right. it really doesn't go anywhere if you if you make the assertion that the whole world has to be post scarcity for it to be viable. I rejected uh, that. Uh, okay. I rejected that. Okay. Uh, so what Transinopia is is a uh, a proof of concept field trial. Um, uh, right. Structured as a scientific experiment, uh, in such a way that the outcome is the demonstration of the viability, one way or the other, of uh, human beings uh, adapting and thriving in uh, a post-scarcity community, and actually a, a network of multiple post-scarcity communities. Uh, I've 
gotten a lot of questions, a lot of pushback, as I expected. Uh, and I've spent a lot of intellectual and research time coming up with responses. And it turns out that as long as I use a, a model based on the International Space Station configuration, ah, really? uh, coupled with uh, medical clinical trial modeling, uh, it's achievable. Hmm. And we're in the phase now of seeking funding. And with that, I think Harold might have some questions. Oh, well, I would, yeah, and all, by all means and everything. That, that's a, something that, uh, that I think for whatever it's worth, I'll just get it over on myself. I, I think that is the, the, the question you're dealing with, and I like the term. How do you say it again? Transinopia? Transinopia. I think yeah. that's de destined to become an important word in the lexicon of the world, uh, scarcity. Oh, because my whole life's work, I think, it, and I would have included in terms of some of the philosophical background beyond, um, you know, Peter Joseph and that sort of thing. Well, Peter or, Joseph is the, um, the individual who, uh, a, a group of individuals in the Venus group, Venus Project, mm -hmm. separated from the Venus Project, yeah. and that became the Zeitgeist Movement, yeah, which right, I mentioned. So Peter, yeah. jo Peter Joseph is yeah. part of that. He's the, the head of that. Yeah, and then there was the Venus Project before down in Florida. With it's done, they're still there. Yeah, they're yeah. still there. And every, But anyway... Um, and by the way, uh -huh. by the way, I should point out that yeah. um, the Venus Project does have a vision of an entire city, mm -hmm. um, but there, he's very inflexible in a sense that he has a vision, and it has to be that way. It ha he wants land from a country. He wants a, uh, uh, and, and so he's not being flexible enough to try it out on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is easier to accomplish. You're talking Venus now? Or yeah, you're Venus, yeah, Venus, Venus. Yeah, Venus, that yeah. was Jacques, somebody, in, yeah, and yeah. Dagmar, or somebody, it was a woman who was yeah, with him too. That's right, that's there, right. And they had that thing down there in Florida. Yeah. But anyway, behind all of those, all three of those, for a matter of fact, there's somebody else that I, I'm sort of always been from the beginning of doing some serious thinking after I got over the angst of mid of uh, teenage life and so forth. Um, oh, you, was, you, you uh, got over it, did you? Yeah, well, I think. He's still <laughs> trying. But uh, it was our Buckminster. Fuller was inspirational to them all, who think that way, at least those three you mentioned, and in any others, uh, that he brought that up uh, way back in well, 1952, he was talking about that. And his philosophy was predicated on that uh, idea that essentially we were trying, the, ma the major premise of it all is that coming out of 200,000 years of human existence within which the laws of scarcity applied to inform and uh, give credence to the, to the social, economic, political, organizing assumptions of scarcity. And that we were coming to a time in evolutionary terms to a time where there would be abundance enough for all and that we were going to be able to transcend the ironclad laws of scarcity that have informed practically all the institutional structuring of the planet. So he was inspirational. Along yeah, that's, that. a very, that's a very good point. I don't know who else yes. was. Yeah, there, there, there are a number of His, others, really. There, there are a number of others. Even now, okay. as we speak, there are individuals uh, in the UK who uh, started focusing a few years back on uh, applying uh, the, the mathematics of physics uh -huh. uh, to the question. Uh, then that evolved, uh, I believe it's a Japanese fellow who then looked at quantum physics and how it applies. Mm -hmm. So again, there's a lot of um, thought, uh, sometimes very profound thought, looking into <laughs> socioeconomic behavior as practiced by human beings. Yeah. But the question of scarcity is at yeah. the root of this. Yeah. Now, it is the case that certain things are scarce. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about Malthusian yeah. scarcity. I'm talking about literally the percentage of the biosphere uh, which certain materials uh, account for. It's only the, so much yeah. gold. Well, but there, I mean, for example, there are, uh, there are minerals that, uh, that form in, inside the, uh, near the, the top of a volcano when yeah. it's active yeah. that then deconstruct after the, the lava stops flowing. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Uh, and they, they're stuff, the most yeah. ephemeral things going. Yeah. But they don't have a, a great monetary value. So uh -huh. the monetary value yeah. is different from the intrinsic value. Yeah. Right? They're not necessarily coupled. Another uh, concept right. might be is you're talking about a reality as we perceive it coming out of history, and then the other thing is a capability that is in a certain sense latent in the reality. 
there, there, there's a capability that has to be realized in material terms, but it has a capability, and the, ca the, the, the capability uh, to provide or to have be part of the design of human institutions and so forth probably arrives before the actual attempts to set that up, and maybe you're trying mm. to set up a thing like that, but uh, the capability mm. would be coming before the actual reality, it would seem to well, me. Well, the capability, there is, a, there is a capability that we're approaching, if not partly there, and that has to do with uh, the use, the entire fundamental thesis about achieving this and, and setting up and running this, this uh, proof of concept trial mm -hmm. is based on the use of technology. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the other thing I found that when when um, st speaking with the other groups and, and mm -hmm. so on yeah. is that they weren't very specific about the technology. Uh, the, it, you know, for example, the Zeitgeist movement uh, has they had something called a, a resource-based economy with yes. resource credits, but a, a credit is part of the parlance of capital. Yes. So it's not a quick. It's not truly a break in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and the technologies involved are many. There are about 50 technological inputs uh, to Transinopia. Uh, it's very specific. 50. And, yeah, okay. About 50, plus or minus. Take off a couple, or is that okay? Uh, it's a few, uh, well, the ones that are, uh, that, uh, are most important, <coughs> are, well, they're, all equal, they're all important, but for yeah. example, uh, self-sufficiency is a major part of this. Okay. Uh, but not self-sufficiency as people think of going out and living in the woods and, no. Uh, that's not the point. The point is to be off the grid as much as possible. How is one off the grid? And the critical point of Transinopia is that it's not, it's not designed to confront or be in conflict with capitalism. It's designed to be situated in, within, or uh, within the context of a larger polity, in this case the United States, mm -hmm. which is a capital state. All right, I mean, it's a capitalist state. Mm -hmm. So the point is not <coughs> to say that the entire country has to change for this to be tested to work. No, the idea is uh, to seek a, uh, an absence <coughs> of confrontation uh, with the goal of providing a solution, uh, and this, the humanitarian impetus is the other part of this. Mm -hmm. uh, if we think, for example, that things are very bad now in terms of migration, uh, from the Mideast uh -huh. into Europe. Yeah, it is. Well, <coughs> it's about, what is it, 1.3 plus million people <coughs> now. Mm. Um, so what are we going to do if the consequences of climate change comes ab come about as predicted? Uh, there may be a way of, uh, you know, of uh, stopping that from happening, mm -hmm. hopefully. <coughs> but if not, uh, especially with the acceleration of the uh, deconstruction of the Antarctic ice shelf, you know, it, it's much more, uh, uh, happening much more quickly than was predicted earlier. The, uh, there are scientists who now have uh, changed their estimate of two to three foot increase in uh, sea levels, especially around the coast, right, uh, uh, where it's a, uh, the biggest impact, to five to eight feet. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the problem is <coughs> that what about all of those human beings? Th there is no solution on the table for that many people, how to deal with that many people, period, on the planet, especially uh, if, the, if urbanization density, urban density increases in terms of population, but at the same time, if they have to leave their coastal areas, if desertification occurs at an accelerating rate, so farmland turns to non-arable desert-like mm. uh, soil, uh, which is another consequence. Uh, and the other consequences, and it's not just climate change. People mm -hmm. focus on that, yeah. uh, and that was an era in early discussions from, from the government and scientists. There's pollution. All air is now polluted. Doesn't matter where you are. Okay. Uh, I I involved in uh, lung as well as uh, implicit in some way that's a little cloudy right now, uh, bladder cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, pollution in the ocean. Uh, is profound uh, in terms of zero oxygen, zo uh, oxygen zones uh, where uh, plastics are adhering to coral reefs and you know they're forming large ball. It's really, really, it's really yeah. terrible. Yeah. So, but the consequence of that is a very conservative statistical paper that yeah. was published uh, in July of 2015 that made a very convincing demonstration yeah. of the fact that we, based on the rate of extinction of vertebrates, both oceanic and terrestrial, yeah. that we are actually already in 
the sixth mass extinction. Oh, that's already already yeah. in, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and that's completely in this case, not the other five, but this case caused yeah. by human activity. Yeah, uh, the problem is that we weren't here. The problem yeah. is that we are. Uh, that's true. Yeah. We couldn't have caused it. Yeah. So okay. So the the problem is that uh, for human beings is that we're the, kind of the top of the food chain. We we're only latently. Yeah. Well, we're we're, we're, we're implicitly in we're implicitly erectus. we're implicitly there. Well, we were contained within Homo erectus. Uh, the big from which the big we were to emerge. We emerged because, uh, uh, well, mostly when we say we, I really think more it's of almost our... Almost sapient species. No, I'm talking about uh, what really differentiates us is our com the complexity and uh, of our neocortex. Yeah. And that, we started evolving that because about two million years ago, in one of our hominid or, uh, or, or, or hominin ancestors, there was a mutation in a genetic uh, uh, yeah. uh, replication. Uh -huh. And that replication... It, and this is again uh, pretty good research from uh, a little over a year ago, I believe. Uh, showed that in fact this is uh, has a very good likelihood of being what caused the rapid increase in neural density uh, and in the convolutions and brain size and brain complexity in human beings. Uh -huh. So that that being said, yeah, right. we yeah. the human uh, human beings have this advanced. Uh, cognition capability coupled with very ancient brain structures, which we see when um, violence is acted out, people reacting against groups Reptilian that have... Reptilian core? In, in a sense, yeah, I yeah. mean, it is true. The rhinencephalon is yeah. the, lowest mm -hmm. the lowest structure in the tripart mm -hmm. brain, mm -hmm. and that is something we share with reptiles. Yeah. And then there's a, a mid-level uh, having to do with emotion and, and so on, and then there's the cortex and especially the neocortex. Mm -hmm. However, um, because the food chain beneath us is becoming extinct, the estimate is that if unabated in 30 to 40 years, we're in trouble. Uh, I don't. I don't. Could you spell that out? The food chain. Yeah, because is the food chain below us. What, what, well, in other food words, the food chain beneath us is, is in this, this extinction. Is, is like? no. This no. is the the sixth mass extinction. Uh, uh, okay, spell it out. Uh, well. Yeah. The, the food we eat, yeah. well, the animals especially yeah, we yeah, eat, yeah. Uh, well, they eat other creatures. And they eventually, do. if you go down the food chain, the, those vertebrates uh, you know, in the interim yeah. are going extinct. So therefore, the things that we eat, uh -huh. are, uh, what, if what they eat is extinct, then what do they eat? So it's oh, a chain effect, yeah. it's a chain reaction in oh, a sense. Okay. So the estimate is, is, that is coincident. Amorphous? It sounds like no, it's not. No, it's not. Okay. No, not okay. really. No, it, it's a, a completely a consequence of uh, uh, anthropogenic. Cl uh, climate change pollution and Did the rest of it. Did any of this be informed by E.O. Wilson? You've been so taken with No, actually, his, his idea about the, um, his, his idea about the evolution of the human yeah. brain uh, uh, took, uh, had, took a different approach. He said uh, his, his thesis, one of his favorite theses, I think, was that uh, it had to do with the fact of uh, cooked meat, which is easier to digest, and then the protein yeah. was easier, more simu yeah. assimilable, yeah. and therefore we were able to, uh, and his scenario that he generated was uh, that our ancestors discovered by accident, uh, there was a storm, yeah. light lightning killed an animal, uh. it cooked it, yeah. and we discovered it was easier to digest and so on, it, went. it turns out Was that it rare or well done? I think it depends on the restaurant. I do. Okay. So, uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, but so, really, now we have a forensic genetic analysis that shows it's nothing to do with that kind of circumstance. Okay. Right. So that's pretty important. Yeah. So the timing for all of this, the mm. effects of climate change, the effects of uh, the impact of pollution, the impact of uh, uh, species extinction, is all in the same 30 to, you know, 30 to 40 year period. Mm -hmm. so, it, so I said to myself, I mean, my goodness, uh, what is going to happen mm. in a capitalist world, because even socialism is slowly disappearing. France just passed the change in employment laws, which, uh, you know, with, the, with, with a lot of, despite a lot of protests, which opens the, uh, the door to uh, changes in the guarantees that French workers have now. You know, that kind of thing. So it's happening everywhere. You mean an erosion of socialist impetus? Certainly in terms in of a, a employment regulations, yeah. It just was passed. That's one thing, yeah. Yeah, so, but, but it's happening everywhere. You know, you know, capitalism is kind of like, um, to me, 
it's kind of like a virus. It consumes as much as it can and keeps on looking for other things to consume because it's seeking in the what, cons what I consider to be an illusion of, of linear perpetual growth. Uh, it seeks to continue uh, accessing uh, scarce resources or accessing non-scarce resources, making them artificially scarce, uh, like De Beers has done with diamonds and so on. I mean, they own it, and so they can control the pricing. Uh, and then what yeah, ends, that's pretty right, obvious. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what ends up is um, the ability to, which is starting to happen now. Uh, it's like a James Bond movie, but it's starting to happen now, and it will happen more and more as mm -hmm. the scenario I'm discussing progresses, that uh, water will be for sale. It will be privatized. Uh, yeah. And so this is problematic. You know, so what do these people do? Well, these being back are fundamentalists. Yeah, we're, we're, talk we're talking about... They're in the saddle. In what, what, what I'm getting at is that there will be hundreds of millions, if not billions of people affected by coastal flooding, desertification. Oh. The, uh, by 2035, perhaps, uh, they'll, the demand for drinkable water will exceed supply by 40%. So, I mean, just, yeah, we have yeah. to think yeah. about yeah. that. Yeah. That's yeah. current yeah. projections, right. current right. projections, which yeah. may not pan out. They're only mm. probabilistic. Yeah, right. We don't know the future, but we try to make a best guess that's based on trend analysis. That's, yeah, that's right, and that's a modeling of that, and trying that's to right. get at, I call it the capability. There's a capability right. inherent, right. and the capability arrives before the realization of it. I don't know if there's a model well, we have in to change there that, that matters. We do have to change that. Well, we have to identify the technological ca capability you, to you're, address this may, ahead of time. If I may, you're spelling out in a certain sense the negative side of the That's capability. Right. There's also uh, a positive, a possible well, co positive side hmm. of the uh, evolutionary process or the sociological economic uh, realization there is a of capabilities yeah. that have arrived newly, like warm water and sewage and things like that that we didn't have in the immediate past and there's improvements right. in terms of the material That's true. reality. But the trend is such that unless things massively change okay. in the, the increasing deregulation uh, of capitalist practices concerning the environment uh, such as was divulged uh, regarding Exxon when in fact uh, yeah. the papers were leaked, the documents were leaked, and then there were actually earlier documents yeah, as well, yeah. since that, that w made the news, where they had uh, a futurist, a scientist, yeah. um, do, a, do a, a study of uh, projections in, cli in climate, and he presented them with his findings, which were remarkably like today's world. And their decision was to suppress it, and then at arm's length, uh, engage other organizations to start a disinformation campaign to create doubt among the population that climate change was real. Well, that's manipulation of consciousness. Of course. It goes on, it's right. called PR. So that what no. I'm saying is we right. cannot leave, we cannot expect capitalism to correct itself. Are uh, you sure? Okay, yes, I'm, not so, am, I'm not so sure I'm ready to accept that uh, yeah, 100%. Because, it, because it, given the, all of the evidence that has mm -hmm. existed for the past decades mm -hmm. and their continued uh, continuance to ignore, to have lobbyists uh, affect uh, legislation that does not support what needs to be done for climate change, <coughs> um, the resistance is pretty clear. And um, the way I look at the world, if you observe someone doing something, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, well, however sophisticated their rhetorical speech is, what they're doing is what they're doing. Yeah, but what if I may, uh, the power structure to ensure throughout the whole human experience has been having, in various ways, that process uh, uh, attributed to But it's never come to this point. They've had the power to manipulate the environment. That is entirely true, And Harold. the populations of the world. It, it, but it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. because that is, we have a human nature, which is not fixed, well, as many people believe. Even Einstein believed it was fixed. Yeah. It can be changed in a number of ways. Okay, I uh, agree with that. I'd like however, to agree with that. However, there's yeah. no time. Mm. This is the point. There's no longer any time. These effects are already in play. What happened? Right? How does it happen that you and I were born into a, a certain time frame that is so absolutely definitive, almost evolutionarily, when we could have been born s in the sixth century or the twelfth well, that, century. Well, that's a very different. No, oh, I mean, people. Why yeah. now? 
Why now? There why are no, we going uh, through I this? I have to tell you. Are we going through a unique process? Or is it part of a continuation of a process? No, no. Um, I'll tell you how I see this. I don't think there, that the why is a correct question to ask. Okay. Because that implies a reason, which implies a logical train of events, which implies a creator, uh, ultimately. Oh, I don't do that. Sense. I'm not doing I know, that. but it's easy yeah. to get there. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I don't you mean ask to do why, that. Yeah. You know, you're looking for a reason. It's an Aristotelian question. Yeah, right. And okay, in that yeah. sense, yeah. the world is more emergent than caused. In that sense, by you know, there, there is an initial cause, but yeah. then that initial cause itself emerged because of other consequences. Mm. Right? Uh, so now we know that uh, we now have signatures of the basic constituents, chemical constituents of life, uh, uh, in another galaxy that was just recently discovered. Yeah. So life may well be ubiquitous. That's no longer. That's not the point. I just got right? a thing from right. Kurzweil last night from Kurzweil AI saying that there's a thing where they're talking about. Um, uh, about uh, a speciation, new speciation that's in the wind. Oh, well, you know, um, I don't want to get into Kurzweil too much. I okay, will say okay. that, um, th that that kind of thought, if I understand what you mean correctly, if, uh, without with little information, uh, Olaf Stapleton was a wonderful writer. Uh, he wrote science fiction a very long time ago. Kurzweil uh, not science fiction. No. Um, but he wrote. He would, but he talked about speciation. He talked about the ability in the future, which is our, you know now. our time for him, yeah, yeah. Uh, where we were able to uh, de determine the uh, ecosystem of another planet, modify the, gen uh, the genetics of the travelers to that other uh, location, mm -hmm. such that when they and they were then in fetal st uh, in. Uh, pre-fetal states mm -hmm. and just, you know, fertilized cells. And when they arrived, they would come to term and be born already pre-adapted to that environment. So speciation... Why in another planet? Why not? Well, okay, I, I'm just saying. I mean, I mean. Uh, I don't why think, not? Uh, for instance, I'm thinking of uh, other planets or something like they're that. Not they're not only going to be... Thinking of uh, this yeah. planet. Well, and the process yes, but the of reason this planet that the and human are, evolution uh, and what's going on and to extend of extended right. ca capability where do you think the people that are able if, if if this planet does go south let's just what say, does that mean what do you mean by go south uh, let's just say that the trends that we're seeing or what we're projecting yeah okay come about well okay, i'm not sure what those trends those are. trends are so we the flooding the desertification increased pollution mass extinction Let's just say okay. that happens. Go Let's on. just say there's, uh, you know, now there's a renewed interest in uh, fission, nuclear power. Uh, let's just say that that continues. And fusion. Well, fusion is safe, re re yeah. right? Well, I think, well, if I may, we just did a program that aired last Tuesday uh, with um, Hansen, James Hansen, the sure. originator of the whole concept of, in, when nobody thought about it, of global warming and the problems. He's all in favor of atomic energy to address the problem of global warming. Right. And it seems to be mm -hmm. the people yeah. who are against uh, global warming cannot get out of the idea the problem that atomic with, energy mm -hmm. may be safe and a way it is, in which It is not be. going to be safe. Okay, well, that's the Atomic energy okay. is inherently unsafe for two reasons. Mm -hmm. One, if there is a meltdown uh, caused by an environmental event. I mean, mm -hmm. all we have to do is Fukushima. look at Fukushima and before that, Chernobyl. How many died? I don't think um, many died from well, that. They, some died it from is, the, whether the, it's from one or a thousand or a hundred thousand. No, it's, a, it's, it's part it's, of it's a, a mythos. Tragedy. And he would be saying it's part of a mythos. So it's so the, dangerous. The, well, no, it's not a, a mythos. Bec it's well, not a myth because a the radiated of. water escaped in the, into the ocean. Right? Well, okay. And that has mm -hmm. a very long half life. How many people and died at Chernobyl? How many people died at a, a three-mile island? That's not the question, well, Harold. It's the consequence. There, there are increased cancers in Europe because of the winds that blew the fallout from Chernobyl into European farmlands. Mm. It's much more complex okay, than simply okay. asking how many okay, died. Okay, make the point. But anyway, yeah. So the point is that fusion is safe because if it's a, there is no meltdown. If mm. something goes wrong, it simply shuts down. Yeah, it uses yeah. water for yeah. fuel. Yeah. It produces more energy than it takes to run itself. Mm. The only consequence is that the lead shells in large scale tokamak mm -hmm. and iter fusion mm -hmm. uh, become affected by the neutron bombardment that comes out of the reaction. Mm -hmm. But that is eminently manageable compared to dealing with a meltdown, number one. Uh, number two, there's tabletop fusion, which is much more smaller scale. Something like ponds or something? Or uh, no, no, it's, it's a device about the no. size of this room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was actually funded by the Obama administration first for eight and then increased to $13 million. Don't we have a new thing for 
stage four of atomic energy generating capability um, that's now I, out I on the market? Mm -hmm. I can only say that given the fact that so many accidents in manufacturing, oil exploration, and other forms of current technology come about because of cost cutting. Uh, come yeah. about <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, right. whether it's by the contract yeah. or the manufacturer, Dealing with scarcity whatever in a it might be, way. seeking yeah. profit yeah. in any way possible. Yeah. Well, okay. That, that that's the other reason that, in my strong belief, nuclear uh, fission power is not going to uh, actually. Be safe. Well, okay, you right. you can take that. And that that's that's a, because it's a factor. It's always been a factor. Mm. Uh, look at and but it's there in, is and a it's a wait, but it's in okay. other industries as well. Monsanto's activity mm. uh, in, and the action they took, such that if their GMO seeds uh, blew uh, by wind to an yeah, organic farm, yeah, right. they the organic farm would be sued unless yeah. they paid the fee. Yeah. This is what capitalism yeah. does. We have to understand it for what it is. You see it, provides, it provides impetus for innovation, yeah. exactly, but it also yeah. has an immensely negative consequences, which we are now well, starting to Well, I suppose we take, what do you take on the other side of that? You go down to ground in a certain ground level or something like that. You got capitalism, you got socialism. So socialism has its, uh, didn't work so well in the Soviet Union. You do away with private well, enterprise. Well, hold on, let's back up a minute. Okay. Communism is one thing. Socialism is something else. Okay. And then there's capitalism. And there are okay, okay, dozens of variations uh, on the uh, on the uh, spectrum from, uh, there are 20 plus forms of anarchy. It's not all lawlessness. Well, it's no, but you form. got the same thing so, with capitalism, right, do you so not? You You're putting out this. something, a, a, right. a singer of capitalism has got a certain the negative the thing. Form of capitalism, there could be a way of having capitalism included in um, a way that's positive. I, a lot of entrepreneurs. Spirit, I, know a lot the, of things I know the argument exists. Yeah. I no longer see it as well, viable because of the behavior of uh, major corporations now effectively writing legislations either through ALEC, the organization ALEC, oh. or by the corporate lawyers themselves. Okay. I do not there, see that yeah. anymore. Well, okay. I think you it have to look at people, yeah. see what they're doing, and accept what you see as what okay. they intend to do is what they're doing. Well, they certainly mm -hmm. are in the driver's seat now. They yeah. are now. Yeah, That's yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the point of tabletop fusion is that it's much more compact. It uses uh, different processes. It's uh, it's still safe, and I know a few individuals have who are developing different variations of that. That is a very good approach because you have a smaller fusion reactor, much less expensive to co to construct, uh, that can serve a community or a range of communities. It doesn't have to solve a wide range of population areas. Yeah. Um, whereas the ITER and tokamak fusion reactors are very large scale, very expensive, and more difficult actually to bring into perpetual uh, operation, even yeah. it, it, whether it's continuous conversion or staccato, you know, like you know, create a, create energy, create energy, create energy with intermittent intermittent uh, pauses. Do you think the evolutionary process has been done within a condition of scarcity? as an inherent thought in terms of the ontologic reality, I think and it, it continues mm -hmm. in terms of human institutions and thought that there's not nearly mm -hmm. enough zero sum as an inherent thing in the way the universe that's another is set part, up? That's another part of what, um, it's, a, it's another part, of what we need a, a few hours to talk about Transanope in detail, but there's a, that's it's another It's a very part important concept, yeah, that's yeah. A, there's transcending part scarcity it. There's another part. There's evolutionarily. A, there's another part. No, it's not evolutionarily, it's well, by the, the express and deliberate design and fabrication of a, of a network of communities that use these principles, use these technologies. Yeah, but that's just part of an evolutionary process uh, that I works. do not know that to be bears, true. Uh, bears live in caves and things happen and everything, and people um, make things and make the world different. They extend, it's, it's uh, extended consciousness. Yes, except that uh, my view, Harold, is that yeah. uh, evolution is a scientific phenomena. Soci well, synergistic evolution, It's yeah. very difficult to apply the same rules of science to social phenomena, psychology, sociology, anthropology, except because these, these economics, economics politics, uh, most of all. Yeah. Uh, when they we, want when to try and make it scientific. Well, it's a could. post facto observation yeah. of events coupled mm. with mathematics. It is not it is not a science. Yeah. Economic is not a science. Anthropo but they do except want for physical anthropology. Anthropology they, is not a science. Uh, these are all observation based. But these politically oriented people do want people to understand that there's not nearly enough. Well, here's the thing. It depends what unless you listen to them Harold, and they can make it that so simple. there is enough. It's no. not that simple. It's mm. deceptive. Uh, it depends on what class one is in. 
And if mm -hmm. you're in the upper classes, the I mean, how long have we known? I mean, the royal families don't even use money. They don't have to. Right. So there's a spectrum. That was your initial question yeah. to the audience. In, yeah, in right, a sense. Right, very good. Yeah. So, yeah. The, uh, so, and even now, I mean, it, it was, there was a wonderful film, The King's Speech. Um, I don't know. Oh, it was, uh, we'll talk about it another time. But it was, it portrayed, um, uh, uh, King of England, who had a speech impediment, yeah. and how he was trained by it, it was real. You no, know, it, it was a true story, but it was wo it's wonderful, uh, and that's where it was disclosed where he had to uh, bet a pound with his speech teacher, uh. and he lost, mm -hmm. and he couldn't pay because he don't, they didn't carry money. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. so it's like that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the point is, it depends. The, the wealthy don't see this; the, uh, they really. Have they ever? I don't know. Well, uh, they've always been a wealthy class. Hasn't you know, there? there's a wonderful um, saying that uh, from Gurdjieff, the Gurdjieff? you know, uh, 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 been Su yeah, the Sufi, yeah. Uh, Sufi yeah, yeah. and uh, it translates as a, a full man cannot understand a hungry, a hungry one. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, one of the characteristics of um, uh, uh, hominid species, including the great apes in general, mm -hmm. is. Um, uh, bonobo, uh, well, not on the plane, not really yeah. talking to bonobo. Not strange. They're, they're very, just very unusual. Different, very yeah. Well, they're different. They live know. on love. Oh, well, they live on sex. The sex, yeah. yeah. Um, love is an imputation we really, it's hard to say. Thank you, yeah, that's you know? true. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the point there is that we have our species, chimpanzees, other species, uh, even bonobos, um, have a hierarchical structure, yeah. right, with an alpha male, usually a male, not always, but usually an alpha male at the top. That's probably the pattern in most social orders. Uh, well, not necessarily. I mean, For example, uh, elephants are a matriarchal society, well, and they have a very different kind of structure. How about they're the much human scenario? Wait, How about the human scenario? Human, uh, human scenario? Human scenario. Think it's always been whoever's got the uh, biggest club. Well, yeah, we're like chimps in suits. Yeah. You know, yeah. we are, we have so much in common. Uh, for example, you can see people sometimes. It's like a little joke they play. They look up at the sky as if they're looking at something. Mm. You can see it on Manhattan. It happens in Manhattan all the time, and other people around start looking up. What they looking at the, the chimps chimps do the same thing uh, if there's a a, a a troop of male chimps yeah. you know looking for food or yeah. going on a raid they go yeah. on war yeah, they decimate right, yeah. their you know yeah. just like we do mm -hmm. um, and one of them sees a piece of fruit that on the left side of the trail that right. fell off a tree right. what do you think he does i have no idea go and get it i guess or he looks to the right with an exaggerated stare, oh. and when the rest well, of the chimps he goes, are, all for he jumps and gets it for himself. A smart little Deception is a in our genetically driven psychosocial structure, uh -huh. right? Oh, okay. So you know, so yeah. there's a lot of this. So when people say looking at chimps, oh look, you know, uh, they're like us. No, we're more, like, we're yeah. like them. That's interesting. Well, we you come know? out of the right? same evolutionary That's correct. process. That's correct. Are you optimistic, pessimistic for the human prospect? And let me just continue I'm, on a different. That's point. a very good question. It, it, on, the it. on the on the on the on the um, the uh, pessimistic, um, global warming is a great danger, and you brought it up. Global in warming is, is only a small part of the greater danger. Okay. Well, I would say global warming is global very warming. Uh, it, climate change is more than just global warming, pollution, um, all the rest of the things that yeah. I was mentioning before. It's yeah. it's much more uh, complicated. Yeah, but the, the ultimate thing it would be, it, it's going to create discomfort, it's going to create all kinds of social displacement, all kinds of upset. But what that would do, let's say global warming, uh, what that would do is upset and create um, instability and uh, all kinds of uh, bubbling up of all kinds of uh, irrationalities and so forth and everything. And the one thing that would really, in my way of thinking, I don't know, maybe... I'm wrong, or that it's not relevant, or no purpose in bringing it up. But I think the only thing that would really be able to, there would be survivors of human beings. The society well, would survive. Of, of, I mean, the, yeah, the species would survive. And the only thing that can prevent that from happening henceforth on this particular planet, third from the sun, and so forth, would be, and apparently, and it's, uh, it should be modeled and everything, is the, the unleashing of the ungodly destructive capability in our thermonuclear weapon systems well, that mm -hmm. dislocation of society could lead to the irrational unleashing of it that could eliminate that's, the species yeah that, that that's a that's possible as well here's how i see it no but it's it's there in the capability yeah no of course i mean the thing about futuring is uh that see that's the problem i have with a, a lot of groups that seek a global state 
you know, uh, not, not uh, like no, I don't mean a political state, not a political no, 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 a okay. state of harmony, a or state of, of scarcity, or of whatever it might be, or of, um, uh, of transopia. It, tra well, the transinopia. Transinopia. So the the, the, when, the terms by which transinopia might become real, well, that's, and meaningful rather but than see, just but a, speaking a about that at an abstract level is my my point entirely is that that's useless. Okay. It's good to have the conversation, well, but there's unless a place one for does it. something. Yeah, well, no, there's a place there's for a just, place for it. there's a place for understanding capability, right. not the reality of how do you right. deal with things. Harold, the, the right. capability. That's true. Okay. But talking, reading, That's intellectual. you know, writing books is great. It's an essential. Without taking action, it will not change anything. Without taking, it will not without, change without the, without, without the former, show, without, without understanding something. the reality and comprehensive it's not terms, just including capability, the action is not going to be able to be guided in the right direction. Uh, you well, need to have uh, the course. understanding before course, you take Harold. the action. Because all kinds of people want to take the action is what's before critical. you've got the understanding. But action is what's critical. I know. No, I, well, I don't agree. I, I don't agree. We disagree. I disagree. I think we need to think it through. Understanding. Not take action. You There's nothing have to be plan acting. for an unknown series of events. No. You can only mm. mo build models. So to answer your question, yeah. positive or negative, yeah. uh, pessimistic or optimistic, both. Yeah. Because okay. an honest well, futurist that, will, that, that covers will the whole always table. tell you that the way to move forward is to generate scenarios on a spectrum from the utopic to the dystopic and in between. Yeah. And then if you want to try to attain a, a, a semi-utopic a or semi-utopic state, you then have to do what's called backcasting and then plan the uh, strategic and tactical steps to do your best to arrive at that or to do the opposite and do take the to find the tactical steps to avoid the dystopic state, like you said, the end state of thermonuclear No, but to understand it in historical terms or in evolutionary terms, understanding it all in those terms, we've come, are we, we're, propo we're proposing uh, a look at history and all of our institutions' thoughts have been predicated upon zero sum. We wonder That's when right. somebody else That's had right. to lose. Well, Scarcity. Not it's always, all been, not always. That's without the, exception, mm, almost. Well, you got family loving their kids, oh, and you got all kinds of love, and you got these kind of things, I a know, part of it. But in terms of the social order, it's been there. So, well, wait, wait, that's a great generalization. I mean, like, communism didn't make it, but in its pure form, it was non monetary. Right, it was non-ownership of production mechanisms. Uh, it, you know, it was it was it was. Those not are details of the no, reality. No, that, that is huge because post-scarcity is by by implication post-capital. If you no, have well, if you have if you don't have scarcity, I disagree with what you, you said. If you if you don't if you, you have abundance in, for everyone. Well, wait a minute. It, hold on. If okay. you have abundance uh -huh. instead of scarcity, uh -huh. then capital is the road to get to secure part of what is scarce. If this, if it, it truly in a post-scarcity environment, it's cooperative, it operates on Nashian economics, not zero-sum, where everyone wins to, uh, you know, in, in, a, uh, in, a, in, a function, in a way that's a function of what they require, as opposed to one person loses, uh, one person wins, or one person wins and a lot yeah, of people lose. Yeah, but we just agreed all of human, uh, human evolution within an evolutionary context was all predicated upon zero sum. Okay, that's um, it. Now, I, no, the, I, no, I, I, I disagree. You I don't think so? I, I think. I that mean, in, in, in the aggregate. I think that or a, a pattern that can I, be recognized as representing what that We are capable that and was. always have been capable of both cooperation and competition. I don't say that. That's no. That's right. not that. But cooperation. There are still cultures which are not zero sum. Well, you have very tribes or they're something. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But and you got the family, is, they a, love each other and all a, these that things. That is a but, proof point mm. of the fact that human beings are not inexorably zero-sum in nature. Well, that's one thing right. uh, to say. I'm just right. saying that's one thing. And I came back to the beginning that we are born into a unique period we're proposing. We're not. It's right. not just another phase of history. It'd be another phase of history of the thing, and it's always been, mm. for a sense, but some hitting others on the head and power politics, right. and it still holds. Now that's well, one. What is unique? And the though, ultimate. What is unique? The ultimate extension right. of that is we now can wipe out the species. That's meaningful. That is. That meaningful. should be made available. That is. Is meaningful. that the case? It's the tridents. That can that can destroy that the whole species. That now, is if that's one dystopic kind of thing, the capability, 
It's there. It hasn't been done. That's right. It's a capability. That's right. New. We haven't been That's able right. to do it. We couldn't do it in so, the Second World right. War, okay? We were protected right. in our right. input. Now, so, on well, the well, other well, side... Well, well, for the other side, Harold... The other side you is can, your thing. Yes, that's the point. That's it. That's the point. There's nothing in between. Because... because you need the need idea to, that... They need to defend what defend what is ours. Yeah. Our access, our this, our that. And all of this, by the way, stems from a very simple aspect of our evolutionary neurobiology. Mm. We immediately form in group and out in out groups. Well those are and details. No. Yeah. I would see them as details. Detail. Yeah, I see them uh, as it's detail. much more than a detail. Because okay. what's going on uh, in terms of uh, uh, say uh, the Middle East, uh, the religion, one religion versus another, yeah. one class versus another, one yeah. race versus another. Yeah. This is built into our evolutionary neurobiology, and we have to do it's our best to become self. Sum, isn't we it? have to be. N no, this is. You don't different. think it is? This is much Seems more to me basic. It is. This yeah. is much more basic. Yeah. Uh, we. Uh, here's a good. Okay, here's a good example. Uh, there was a very interesting experiment that was conducted with. Um, uh, volunteers at college, yeah. students, yeah. because you know they're available and you know they're. In any case, they're what? They're interested in doing, trying new things. So they're they're, they're active. They're, they're very open. active. Yeah. So what happened was uh, opening, uh, yeah. that uh, one group randomly selected mm -hmm. uh, was given a a red triangle. Okay. Uh, in the cardboard, you know, it's a red yeah. triangle. Yeah, right. The other group was given a blue circle. Yeah. Okay. Within minutes. Uh -huh. Each group started, and this was not like tongue in cheek, this was not joking around, this yeah. was a serious development in front of the uh, scientists' eyes. Okay. Uh, that each group started um, thinking more of their, whether it was circle or triangle, was better, better the me. color was better, that the other people were inferior to them, it yeah. was very subtle. This is yeah. a normal function. Yeah. yeah. And this is almost more basic than some of the other things we've talked about, huh. right? Okay. The in-group, yeah. out-group yeah, yeah, that's differentiation. Very, yeah, that's true, yeah. So, and capitalism tends to, um, especially unregulated, tends to uh, encourage that because competition in the marketplace yeah. is a good thing. Well, what does that mean? Well, that's the basis of zero sum. If for one to win, somebody else has to lose. It's you want to be a that. winner. It's not just that. No, but that's because the, that's think the basis. how subtle it is. Uh, we and have it's based far upon many, scarcity. We have far many br more brands of products yeah. than we actually need. That's true. Right? That's Why absolutely is that? true. I can because see it in one the group, a demo, you know, a demo, uh, in, uh, in research into a demographic, market research yeah, into right. a given demographic, yeah. shows their likes and dislikes. Yeah. Here's another group with different license yeah. dislikes. So you repackage it, it's yeah. the same damn thing. And colors matter. Uh, colors the design matter. of the, the, the bouncing matters. bear or something. Everything yeah. matters. Yeah. And so advertising in and of itself, while the creativity may be fun. And tremendous it, competition. But it's not just competition, mm -hmm. it's, the, uh, it's the lack of, if it wasn't for certain legislation that came about after uh, the Vioxx uh, scenario, mm. uh, if all you have to do is observe some television uh, DTC, direct-to-consumer pharmaceutical advertising. D how do you say that? D direct to consumer, DTC. DTC. Yeah. I've learned something. DTC. Yeah. And you direct can, to and consumer. And you can see it. You know, I mean, there <laughs> right. are uh, a lot of, uh, you know, in clinical trials, first of all, pharmaceutical houses oh, yeah. actually suppress, yeah. uh, on average, this is not, you know, definitive, but on yeah. average, 50% of the results of the clinical trials that aren't in line with their yeah. marketing plans. Right, right. Right, and that, we know what they did with Vioxx, right? They know, we know what happened with tobacco and the tobacco company. We know mm. a lot about how these, we know the, 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 the what Ford did with the Pinto. Mm. We know all of this. Ford did that with the Pinto? You no, know, what Ford did with the Pinto was made a decision that it was cheaper to pay the lawsuits, the lost lawsuits for people who were, were killed or injured than to redesign the Pinto. Henry Ford used to tinker in my grandmother's garage when he was eight years old in Detroit. That's lovely. That was a long time ago. Yeah, that's lovely, yeah. 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 So the point is, we have to observe human beings doing what they do and accept it at face value that they will continue doing so unless stopped. There's only two ways to stop it. There's only three ways. 
Um, how about like, reasonable how like, like, thinking, almost, reasonable argumentation? No, it's not, <laughs> Harold, please. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know. Oh, sorry, that's impossible. Yeah. That really, that's I mean, over the horizon. I mean, we've seen it. Somewhere uh, over the we, rainbow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We've seen it in the mm. hearings on Capitol Hill, yeah. uh, where, you know, the uh, the tobacco companies were there, and they're all being reasonable. And, you know, and after 2008, the uh, the financial, the CEOs of Wall Street companies yeah, yeah. lying their asses off, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they do it so well, yeah, okay. and they seem so rational, and all this yeah. So we have to evaluate a human being uh, the way they present themselves <coughs> okay. to you. Yeah. Not okay. yeah. when they say, oh, but really I'm a nice person inside and really I would do this if we could. Yeah. Ignore that. Observe yeah. the behavior. Yeah. So, Be wary. Uh, yeah. So uh, to the question of optimistic and pessimistic, it's more in a, with a scientific experiment, you may have something you would like to come about, but that is not the point of a scientific experiment. It's mm. to conduct a well regimented evaluation yeah. to see process, what the outcome yeah. is. Yeah, right. To okay, see what fair it enough. is. Yeah, scientific right? process. Uh, yeah. So the point is to uh, gather individuals with skills. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you remember Biosphere 2? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. did that fail? I don't know. It I don't failed, know. It fi failed largely because anyone who was interested could be recruited to join. They had no skills. They didn't know what to do if there was a problem. Uh -huh. They didn't know how to fix things. There, was no, there were no doctors. And so things went south very fast. You, Sounds, use, a, yeah. you use a medical model in transanopia. We use a medical model where the individuals who are recruited, again, it's the, the ISS. You don't send just anyone to be an astronaut in the space yeah, station. Yeah. They have to be calm. They have to be able to absorb a lot of disparate information and process it very quickly. Right, they particularly have if to you're be, trying to get to they systems, have to be, yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially, again, calm mm -hmm. is the real, yeah. they have to remain calm and rational in deadly circumstances, yeah, okay. right? So you need a certain psychographic profile. Oh. You then need certain skills. Yeah, yeah. So the it's inhabitants of phase one of Transnopia have certain skills that and allow them to address issues that arise. Then back to the question that I never got to that you asked, which is very important, that the technologies involved. I'll list a few. Uh, in terms of uh, alternative energy, uh, at first in terms of housing, um, remember, this this is a this is a nonprofit, so it seeks funding rather than investment. Uh, investment oh, is a non-starter because since no money is being used in the trial by the people who are living in these communities. How do the materials get there to build the um, interface? Because the funding takes care of the initial setup. Well, okay. But the, 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 the yeah. remember, the test is not the setup. Yeah. The, uh, the proof of concept is in the operational uh, aspect. Like Can experiment. human beings adapt to it? Mm -hmm. uh, can uh, emergencies be taken care of? For example, food is taken care of by, there's now a closed loop aquaponic system where you have aquatic animals and uh, uh, plants and you know food plants and so on that grow yeah. some in, hi in hydroponics uh, and the uh, the yeah. the um, fecal matter the, uh, yeah. the nitrates and the fecal yeah. matter of the or of the uh, aquatic animals yeah. is used to fertilize and that is a closed system that works that yeah. so you have that you <coughs> have for alternative energy depends on the ecosystem we have uh, uh, different locations targeted. Uh, one would be in a desert. Well, in that case, uh, wind as well as uh, solar would be uh, the best choice. Yeah, sure. Uh, and uh, in ter if it's uh, near the ocean, then say a uh, wave uh, gen well, uh, generation uh, on a mountain, certainly, uh, especially if it's near any sort of uh, cross, co cross country trade current or anything yeah. like that, yeah. uh, wind is the way to go. So, like that. Yeah. Uh, we are targeting. Uh, uh, abandoned urban uh, structures. So you're talking about living arrangements. Or, Absolutely. Or, or thing. That Absolutely. You're talking actual things that exist yes, in the way of actual testing. That's things what that you exist. want to do something. That's yeah. what Transanopia is. Yeah, I don't think there's any but much point in doing anything until we get it straight what's going on. Exa that's my difference with you. If we wait till we know, if, till we get it straight what's going on, it'll be too late. Well, that's a difference because in my opinion. That, because if, if we do it your way, what's well, going to happen? What's well, I don't. Well, what, what we do is we get an idea of uh, of a design principle that is in keeping with what we're going to do. You, but you, in the end, you still have to design it, and that's already done. No, no, no. We've already designed well, it. I'm just trying to right. say I still think the major thing is to get the basic principles of what is going on. On one vector, you have an extended capability by the species called Homo sapiens that has the ability to destroy itself. 
there is a yin and yang or something you can just throw up from poetry or anything else that on the uh, that's on the killing reef side, as Mr. Fuller would say. On the living reef side, we're going through a qualitative transformation through synergistic, evolving capability that is just coming in a Niagara proportions to where we are able to provide su material sustenance it, to the people of the world mm, within an ecological context. It right. is equally significant right. existentially on the positive side as is the destructive side. Those two things have to be brought into sync. And then you've got, and over and how every- how do you plan to do that, Let me Harold? just say, well, first of all, what you, you get to an agreement on it, or- How do you get to an agreement, Well, Harold? let me just, by talking, by, and by talking, thinking, and then People have uh, been over, talking forever. Well, no, they haven't. They yes, haven't been they in have. a, We were not able to destroy the species until yesterday. Yesterday, late, oh. me, it's so, uh, re, it's just now. This is now, is a difference. And we've also not had the ability collectively to transcend Harold. at our capability material scarcity as an ontologic reality, and which it is, if we do, we can have over the winning right. of every institution, there is enough. There is enough. There never has been, Harold, there is enough. Yes, it's all true. Yeah. That is the So that that's what we have to come thesis. to first. But no. You don't have to exhibit anything. It's already there. It we're already there. It doesn't matter. No, but we're already it, there. It, it's irrelevant because it remains a hypothetical until no, something no, is done. No, no, How is it not a hypothetical, Harold? Well, no, that's I'm, ridiculous. Think about it. There are, you, the, you, do you know when the technocracy movement started? 1933. Right. Okay. okay. Is, well, that's relatively within the range, uh, yeah. But or the time in which Harold, we live. Do you see any, we live within that phase. But, but Harold, there is no evidence that the those invested in the capitalist. Um, well, why do you keep philosophy. signaling on some br greedy people that are for characteristic of a lot of the political stuff now? Rather, why don't you why, bring up why, Fuller? Who else is there to focus Fuller. on, Harold? Buckminster Fuller. Okay, Buckminster okay, Fuller well, did I'm it for one. I'm not going to turn this into a he, discussion he, on Fuller. It happens well, every time, and that is not the point. The well, point is... the point of what point, I think. You know, I know. I know you do. I don't think there's anything until, you can do until you know what's well, going on. That mindset okay. is what keeps people from trying to actually set up something that may work. No, they, well, absolutely okay. There's it keeps nothing them to say you can't try else. that and everything, but I don't think that's what's needed. What's needed is to get the understanding that there is enough at a level of capability. But, it, but once you have that understanding... Once you have that, then you can build your institutions what? from that. That's ridiculous. No, well, it isn't you, ridiculous you, uh, we, can, we can go up. We understand. You're talking about convincing... No, I'm talking about... You're talking about, about convincing... No, to you're identifying about convincing the reality. You're talking about the head of ExxonMobil that... Abundance already exists. Why do you keep bringing up uh, Exxon Mobil? How, then how, how are you, you got going some to change? How, you to you go, how are you going to change the behavior of the capitalist? Uh, well, why do you keep uh, bringing up capitalists? You already admitted and acknowledged what? a while back in our talk today that those companies are doing these things and they're not slowing down. So and the and the legality of even if they get caught, do you know what happened? Uh, you know, in the Gulf oil spill, right? Uh, that was a mess. Yeah. Yes, it was a mess. And uh, there were fines, mm. and there were supposed to be reparations to the people impacted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and as we close, yes. ExxonMobil, the reason I pick on them, uh, they are now, or cite them, they are now very mm. busy with their lawyers getting yeah, out know. of pain. Yeah, I know, I see it. Yeah. That is the behavior. Okay. We have to let, let them do their thing. Okay. Transanopia is independent. Okay, right. And, and Transanopia, that's the point. Transanopia that is, a, is, the is point. an idea that's going to come into the vocabulary of the world, and I think it's wonderful. It's really good. I'm glad you're doing it. I don't know if it's it. good or bad. No. It has to be set up, right. run, right. and evaluated. All right. Well, you heard it here first. Transanopia, and here it no, is. No, it's not Stu first. It's been spoken about elsewhere. <laughs> okay. Stuart Mason Dambrot, major thinker in these kind of matters. Stuart, so good. Nice okay. you, Harold. Thank you very much for viewing. You heard it here first, folks. I want you it's to get that. First. I want you to get that trademark, my brother. Okay? It's not first. Lawyers, get with it to trademark this young man. Okay. Thank you very much for viewing. We're coming back again tomorrow. Thank you, Stuart. Keep trucking, and um, <laughs> it's really interesting what you're doing. Thank you. Coming back tomorrow. Thanks again. Tune in tomorrow. Okay, we're just 